Did you know that there are books about poi? Well, at least a few. I read one this month, and I'd love to tell you all about it. Drex here from Drex Factor Poi, sharing with you the love of poi spinning and flow arts to benefit your body and brain. And today, I'm going to share with you my thoughts on the rhythm and life of poi by Nigmoni Wata. I am pronouncing her name poorly, and I can guarantee you that it's going to go downhill from there. But first up, I just want to give a shout out to the friends of the channel. Big thanks to Dark Monk, Flow DNA, Flow Fests, Flow Toys, Juggling Calling, Pyroterra Light Toys, Spinballs, and Ultra Poi for helping to make the videos on this channel possible. You can learn more about all these amazing companies and the work that they're doing to support flow artists like yourself by checking out the links that I've got down in the description of this video. So let's talk about this book. The Rhythm and Life of Poi is a 2001 nonfiction book about the culture, construction, and practices around Maori poi spinning by Nigmoni Wata. I've known that this book existed for nearly 10 years now and decided to give it a read in honor of Asian and Pacific Islander Month here in the United States. I've actually been really curious lately about the cultural origins of Maori poi, and this seemed like a great place to start. I have never actually seen the traditional style of poi spinning firsthand, nor had a direct conversation with somebody of Maori origin regarding its importance in their culture, and I wasn't sure what to expect from this. And yes, side note, 13 years spinning poi is indeed a very long time to be doing this before actively engaging and learning more about its cultural origins. Guilty as charged. Did I enjoy the book? Yes. Did I get out of it what I thought I was going to? No. And the gap between those expectations and what the book actually is, I think is something of a teachable moment, both for me as well as for many of you out there watching. And first, just to give context, because I'm sure there's someone out there to whom this is going to be news, but we get the word poi from the Maori peoples of New Zealand. It is a traditional juggling and dance art that has an important role in ceremony as well as recreation. Nigamoni has had a large role in preserving cultural traditions around poi, as well as writing poi pieces that have toured all over the world. And she's written down many of her experiences, not just of writing these poi pieces, but also how it has impacted her life in this book. The book itself is broken into three different sections, giving context to poi and its performance. The first section, The Spiritual Heritage of Poi, talks about poi from the perspective of Maori cosmology, how the different pieces that make up poi themselves are related to the pantheon of Maori deities, and the many songs that tell of their relationships and histories. I think one of the most fascinating aspects of this section, to me at least, was placing poi in the context of different types of rituals, how it can be thought of as a form of courtship, entertainment, as well as how it can be used to honor important guests and to be an element of diplomacy. There's also a whole chapter in this section not only about the author's background with poi, but also putting it into a historical context with regards to both pre- and post-colonization. It was interesting learning about some of the key figures who applied poi to a position of entertainment and then were involved in touring it abroad, as well as how those influences changed both the performance and construction of the poi. The second section is called Preparing Poi, and it's a very detailed instruction manual on how to make poi out of raupo, flax, and indeed many more modern materials as well. Again, there's a lot in here about the author's own experiences harvesting the materials necessary to make poi, and you can tell that she's had a deep and lifelong relationship with this art in all of its myriad forms. I really appreciated reading the biographical details as to how she worked to achieve the same kind of proficiency in making rope and other materials that her relatives really had an amazing facility for. There's also a lot to be said here about how the details of construction influence the type of performance that you do with the poi. As the author herself points out, the original materials used to make raupo poi aren't that terribly durable, so a poi made with these traditional methods isn't hugely well suited to use as a performance tool when you're doing them on a daily basis. Some of the advice and construction that she gives here specifically informs how to make poi that will stand up to that kind of heavy use. Again, this is an interesting spot where seeing the influence of modern entertainment and tourism has resulted in both minor and major changes to the art. The final section is probably the one that seemed closest to what I'd imagined the book to be about, and it covers poi in performance. It's in this section that we find instructions on how to actually perform with poi, basic techniques to train dexterity and the like. And it's also here that I realized that poi isn't just a skill toy in this context. It's also a musical instrument. 
There's an entire chapter in here about how different form factors, construction materials, and sizes of poi will produce different sounds depending upon how they sail through the air, come in contact with the body, and maintain tempo. Without a doubt, one of the parts of this book that I treasure the most was its emphasis on the music around poi. Long before we learn any techniques regarding its performance, Nagamoni is teaching us songs that cover a variety of themes and emotions. The poi themselves become tools not only for telling that story, but also also to accompany and fill out the songs themselves. I think those of us who engage in the Western style of poi spinning frequently have a strong connection to music as an inspiration for our flow, but the idea of the poi themselves as being an aspect of creating that music is one that was and continues to be really thought-provoking to me. And before anyone chimes in with this, yes, there are definitely parallels with Latin American bolas here. Huata actually points this parallel out herself, and it's also clear that she's been exposed to several other movement arts that bear a resemblance to the Maori poi tradition as well including fire spinning. Whether it be the legends, songs, history, or even the personal experiences of the author, it almost seemed like performing with the poi was the last step of a much larger journey of identifying not only one's place in their community, but also in the wider world and indeed the cosmos. That was a lot deeper than what I thought I was signing up for. I will also say that as someone who came to dance through poi, and has increasingly wanted to use poi and indeed flow arts in general as a means for telling stories through movement, it dawns on me that I'm more or less trying to do something that the Maori themselves have been doing now for hundreds of years. In a lot of ways, I'm almost trying to return to the root of it. The book also represents a really interesting time capsule, because coming out in 2001, it also predates the advent of YouTube and social media, as well as the popularization of the Burning Man Festival here in the United States, which has been one of those big things that has impacted the spread of poi spinning here. Long story short, this was definitely a wonderful journey and a step in learning just how much I really have to learn about the traditions of poi and what poi is capable of. The rhythm and life of poi can be hard to find here in the United States, but it's really worth a read. Pick it up if, like me, you're curious to learn more about where Poi comes from. Did you get anything out of this video? Make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe to help other people find it and to help my channel grow. I also just wanted to put out a huge thank you because this video would not be possible without the kind contributions of these wonderful folks right here. These are my Flow patrons on Patreon, and they, along with the wonderful people listed down in the description, make this video and all the videos on my channel possible. If you'd like to help me in my mission to bring poi spinning and flow arts to the wider world and help people learn to be creative with their brains and their bodies, you can do so by heading over to patreon.com slash drexfactorpoi and signing up. You can get early access to all of my content, a say in what topics I tackle in the future, plus some behind the scenes and extras content as well. So go check that out. Please and thank you. Have you read The Rhythm and Life of Poi yourself? What were your thoughts? What jumped out to you and did it make you want to learn more? I'd love to know, so leave me a comment and fill me in. I'll include a link to some other video reviews that I've made, which all are for equipment, but I don't think this will be the last book review I do either. In the meantime, please be sure to get out and flow today, and I'll see you with a new video on Wednesday. Peace.